Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Film Fan Club Show. I'm Sam Carrico. Man, it's been a week, huh? Yes, now it's been one week since my film, Killers of the Flower Moon, did not win the Academy Award for Best Picture. Uh, yeah, apparently Oppenheimer was the favorite this entire time, and nobody told me? Not gonna lie, losing an Oscar kind of stings. I just know all of my haters were breathing a huge sigh of relief last week. And not only Best Picture, Lily Gladstone, a, clo a close personal friend of mine, lost the race for Best Actress. The Oscar instead go into Emma Stone for Poor Things, you know, a movie in which she plays an infant whose brain is put into the body of a woman who th then begins having a lot of promiscuous sex with older men. Now I don't know why Hollywood would love a role like that so much, but I have some ideas. <laughs> But let's not focus on the negative, though. One of the best results from last week's Oscars was Godzilla Minus One, winning Best Visual Effects and becoming the first Godzilla film to win an Academy Award. Yeah, this small team went up against Disney and won! It's a true underdog story, much like my dating life. A little self-deprecating humor there for you. Uh, but why did this Godzilla film win? I mean, it's not the only Godzilla film with great effects, and the effects are great. Well, as my guest Ian Simmons pointed out last week, it's what they were able to accomplish on a budget of less than 20 million US dollars. Let's show the clip. This is the kind of message award that I like for Hollywood to send. Yes. I, you know, because it, there was some stiff competition looking at the clips that they showed where, you know, all the effects were coming together in layers and all the, the craftsmanship that goes into making it. It was up against Guardians of the Galaxy Part 3 for crying out loud and yeah. Napoleon, like much more polished, slick things, but these are also movies that cost a quarter of a billion dollars. And Hollywood is hemorrhaging money and talent right now, so I think that was a signal to say, hey guys, look what these scrappy chaps can do with $20 million, what they can do with our marginal like write-off money, yeah. and they can win an Oscar. Get your act together, and I appreciate that. Couldn't agree more, Ian, and I hope you guys check out our discussion from last week. But I'd also like to add that I think a big reason this Godzilla movie won is that it's just the best movie nominated in that category. There have been good Toho Godzilla movies before. The first one in 1954 was of course an allegory for the nuclear attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The franchise has definitely gone through phases though, with later movies essentially just becoming hokey action flicks with focused on giant monsters fighting each other. But now with 2616's Shin Godzilla, and especially Godzilla Minus One, the franchise seems to have returned to its roots. Shin Godzilla became an allegory for the 2011 tsunamis, and Minus One is no longer about the nuclear attacks, but instead the fallout and the survivor's guilt that followed. Let's compare that to the evolution of the American Godzilla movies, shall we? To be honest, I don't know what they were trying to accomplish in 1998. That's a lot of fish. But the 2014 film seemed like it attempted to be an actual movie. It had a theme of the government hiding a secret from the public and at least tried to develop the human characters. Godzilla King of the Monsters raised the question, what if the humans are the real bad guys? They were trying to be about something, much like the earlier and now later Toho films. But what is the American Godzilla franchise do, uh, doing now? Big Lizard fights Giant Monkey. Big Lizard and Giant Monkey fight other Giant Monkey. It's boring. In other words, hokey action flicks focused on giant mon monsters fighting each other. What I want to know what is, what is the film saying? Shin Godzilla says that sometimes government bureaucracies intended to make things better actually make things worse. Minus One says that if you have survivor's guilt, it's okay to move on with your life. All right? Even the human characters in those films are better than any human character in any of the American movies, except maybe Matthew Broderick. That's a lot of fish. Matthew Broderick aside though, I don't mean to disparage Godzilla X Kong, the new empire TM, to prop up Godzilla Minus One. Minus One doesn't need that, they have an Oscar now. But when you look at the way that one film is made, the intent behind that film, and compare it to another, well it just reminds me of the old saying, if you make it, they will come. It here means a good film, and they means Academy Awards. All right, we've got a great show for you lined up. Let's get right to our panel discussion and talk more about Godzilla Minus One. Let's welcome tonight's guests. He is woke. And by that, I mean he was able to stay awake during the Marvels. Hilton Price is here. He is the co-host of the Opinions Like A-Holes podcast and the People Persons Paper podcast. Hi, Hilton. Hey, thanks for having me. Pleasure. 
and he's called the king of the monsters, mostly by his ex-girlfriends. He is a filmmaker, actor, based in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Eddie Saucedo. Hey, Eddie, how are you? You look familiar. I know you from somewhere. No, no, I, I'm pretty sure we don't. Uh, anyways, guys, my monologue this week, all about Godzilla, of course. We're getting ready for Godzilla X Kong. And something I noticed when I watched Godzilla minus Kong was uh, that it's actually uh, a lot better than any of the American Godzilla movies that I've seen. I'm counting 1998's Godzilla. I'm counting 2014 Godzilla. I'm counting King of the Monsters. I'm counting Godzilla versus Kong. Haven't seen Godzilla X Kong yet, but judging by the trailer, I think that will not be as good as this one. Uh, Hilton, what do you say to my assessment? I think that the Japanese are really onto something here. They seem to have a better understanding of Godzilla. Why can't the Americans keep up? Uh, you really, what this movie was, uh, you know, you go in hoping to see Godzilla, you go in because the, the smash into Tokyo is going to be fun to watch for the millionth time, but that's not what you're getting. You're getting a human drama about survivor guilt, about the, uh, situation rebuilding after World War II and about how to face a, a fresh challenge when you're just trying to walk away from a, an all encompassing, overwhelming challenge, like, like wartime. And, and it, it's, it's. It's the story of Shikishima that really holds this thing together. And, and that's why this movie is light years ahead of any Godzilla movie that's ever come out in America. And I'd go as far as saying probably most of the stuff that Toho had done before this film, um, you know, with limited exception, of course. And Eddie, that's a great uh, segue because, uh, yeah, I saw, I have not seen a lot of the other Japanese Godzilla movies. I had seen uh, Shin Godzilla. 2016's Shin Godzilla, and I was blown away. I thought it was a fantastic movie. So I was like, how can Godzilla minus one top that? I mean, 2014 is probably the closest the Americans have gotten to putting together a solid Godzilla movie. 1998, don't remember it fondly. Godzilla King of the Monsters, loved the trailers, but it wasn't quite up to snuff. So so what, what is it that we're missing here in the States? And oh, if you even agree with my assessment, Eddie. Yeah, no, uh, I definitely do agree. The Japanese have capitalized on the success, past success of Godzilla, and they found, I don't know if this is the first time this director has taken on Godzilla, but based on what I'm seeing, they took their time to kind of just tell a story. Uh, like you said, a survivor's guilt, you know, I think there's a lot to, to say about how the Japanese felt about World War II and coming out, out of that, and which happens to have Godzilla, and, you know, it's... It's almost like a metaphor for what the Japanese went through back back in the 40s and you know maybe even into the 50s after World War II. Um, what but, I appreciate what I would appreciate yeah. was yeah Shin Godzilla is uh, each one takes a little bit from uh, a real event the the 2011 uh, earthquake and tsunami and then this one like you're like you guys are both talking about dealing with the aftermath of World War II. I just thought it was uh, really well handled, but I didn't mean to cut you off, Eddie. Oh no, I mean basically just saying like how. They focus on the drama of what was going on with the characters that we can relate to, which as the ones that in, in the U.S. that we're seeing with, you know, Godzilla and the King Kong, those ones that legendary pictures are making seem to be more about trying to make popcorn movies, make the popcorn audience uh, happy. But this one, I feel like was a good blend, you know, it, it, it was kind of reminiscent to me. It kind of like was paying homage to Jaws in a way also. But. Yeah, I think that's kind of what the less is more sometimes is, is what I think the Japanese are doing. Less Incredible. is more when it's done well. One thing, right. you know, it's had maybe four, maybe five major scenes with Godzilla actually in it. Uh, I felt like we got so much less Godzilla than I, than I was expecting, but mm -hmm. every one of those scenes was so impactful in establishing the threat, the danger, the, the um, just the overwhelming power that he had was so well shown that he could have been on screen for 10 minutes and you wouldn't care you wouldn't care it was so good oh man i'm trying to look up the budget right now yeah because you we but we all keep saying it's like 15 million dollars on the budget that they were able to make this movie on compared to the oftentimes we see 200 million dollars again i'm not trying to pick on marvel but they don't know how to make a movie under 300 million dollars it seems like sometimes and i i had to keep like double checking that budget for this movie because the, the look of Godzilla is is on par with the legendary movies, I think. And we've all seen the Godzilla X Kong trailer. Of course, I have to mention that we're releasing this close to when Godzilla X Kong, terrible title, Godzilla X Kong comes out. Really quickly, 
am I wrong for hating the trailer? What I, I just didn't like it that much. Eddie, what did you what did you think of the trailer? Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. I uh, I think it's cool to see them team up again and see them taking on a cool new threat, but you don't really I don't care about the human characters. I mean, I'm just there to see big monsters fight. Um it's just a completely different take, you know. Maybe I'll, I'll probably see it though. Either way, I'll still see. It. Oh, I'm I'm gonna see it, of course. But I mean, they, they got the the monster fights and stuff. But Hilton Eddie just said something that I thought was a great point too. I, I've never cared about a single human character other than maybe maybe Matthew Broderick, just because he's Matthew Broderick in '98. I have not cared about a single human character in a Godzilla movie before this one. This one is able to. You come for the Godzilla. You stay for the character journey, huh? Were you expecting that at all? And of course, what did you think of the Godzilla X Kong trailer? Are you as excited for that after seeing um, this? Just like Eddie, it, it's going to be big, dumb monster movie, and you know that's something to appreciate too. And and that's actually what got me into Godzilla. Uh, I got excited for Shin Godzilla just because it was finally a modern Godzilla film made by Toho. I knew that those were the true masters, but I'd never really seen any of the classics. And so I was seeing Shin Godzilla, and and. Agreed. It's a great movie. It's an awesome Godzilla movie. Godzilla is incredibly threatening and menacing in that movie. But I don't remember a single human character. I don't remember much about the overall plot. Even that one, which I now will go back and rewatch, to be honest. But it, it, it did not grip me the way that the story of these real, seemingly real people in Godzilla Minus One did, for sure. And as for the Godzilla X Kong trailer, yeah, it's just it just looks like more of Godzilla versus Kong, which was just come for Godzilla and Kong fighting. And now it's going to be, I guess, the two of them going on a run through the park, maybe? I, I, I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> It'll be fun. I forgot to mention at the, off the top of this video, if my voice sounds at all different, it's because I'm a trooper. It's because I'm not like those wimp, beta male, other late night talk show host, Stephen Colbert, gets sick to his stomach, whatever. He doesn't come to work for two weeks. I'm here. I'm ready to grumble like Godzilla in Godzilla versus Kong. Let's do a shot with me. This is, uh, this is Dayquil. It's nighttime, but yeah, I think you can take it at night. Let's do a shot, shall we? You got some Sprite with it? We've got our our, our, our kind of first initial thoughts mm -hmm. out of the way. I mean, is, it, is there anything else non-spoilery that we should... I mean, if we're going to recommend Godzilla Minus One, I think it's clear where we stand. But let's go really quickly. Hilton, would you recommend somebody see Godzilla Minus One? See it twice. Uh, second time I picked up on elements of the character uh, backstory that I did the first time, and it really made the decisions made in the second half of the movie have that much more uh, power. See it twice. And Eddie. Yeah, I saw it twice as well. And I got to say, the first time I was surprised and I was in love with it. But the second time, I really just got to live with it. You know, I really saw it. They're really trying to put some magic together with this one. You know, yeah, I think they did. I would also recommend it. Is it the best Godzilla movie I've ever seen? I don't know. I still like Shin Godzilla. I really like how how it touches on the 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 tsunami, the the earthquake as a metaphor. I like the evolution of Godzilla in that movie. I like uh, what it has to say about bureaucracy. It, it, it was it was really well done. And this one is just such a different movie. I'm really having a hard time comparing the two. So I won't even do that unless unlike yeah. how I just did. So I will say, see both of them. See Shin Godzilla on DVD. Bam, go see Godzilla Minus One. It's probably on DVD when I release this video. So <laughs> I think great movie, great movie. I'm just, I'm so happy that we all liked it because, uh, you know, we've all had differing opinions in the past. So let's get into a little bit of spoilers. I'm going to throw up our, our famous spoiler banner. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. We're in spoiler mode now, fellas. All right. The movie starts with a kamikaze pilot. Kamikaze pilot from Japan, 1945, lands he says there's something wrong with this plane. There's nothing wrong with this plane. He just wants to get out of killing himself. Imagine that. And then Godzilla comes, kills everybody except for him. What did we think of this opening scene, Hilton? I was blown away. Uh, it, yeah, how fast they got to the action and full-on terrifying Godzilla. This was the most scared of Godzilla I've ever been in the theater. Uh, and I, I saw this maybe just about two weeks after seeing Godzilla 2000 when it was re-released in the theater uh, as part of the big, you know, Godzilla anniversary that's happening right now. And that movie, uh, which was released originally, I think, in 1999 in Japan, was also had a big Godzilla scene right off the top. And this one was so much more powerful, so much more terrifying. It was just exceptional filmmaking in establishing the threat quickly and early. And sure enough, he gets bigger. That's not even fully grown Godzilla. Oh man! Uh oh, this guy's uh. Oh my <laughs> you God, okay, so buddy. 
Oh, I feel friend. I'm, I'm great. So. I'm great. I'm great. Eddie, uh, opening scene right off the gate, like Hilton was saying, gets right yeah. to the action. And, and and again, going back to that, it hides Godzilla enough, but also you don't ever feel like you're getting you know short short changed. Like in mm -hmm. 2014, I felt a little short changed. I was very pleasantly surprised by the amount of Godzilla in this movie. But yeah, this opening scene, what did you think? And also setting up our hero. This is a movie released in America, Japanese kamikaze pilot in World War II, and I cared about it. Huh? What did you think yeah. of opening? I think uh, right off the bat, there's something you can establish that's relatable to anyone of any race. It's like, you know, the fear, right? The fear of whatever war, the fear of uh, giant monsters, and then the guilt of, you know, surviving something like that. There was another survivor, by the way. Remember the mechanic? I forgot his name. Tachibana, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I thought it was great. I just, uh, I didn't know he would clench up like that the way he did, and, and to see the effect of him no, freezing up was was tragic. Uh, but yeah, there's great, no great. way that gun was gonna kill Godzilla. Am I right? No. Though there's no way. No, I I think the scene on the boat with um with Captain and Doc and Kid really shows that basic firearms, basic even basic explosives, unless very strategically used, weren't going to be effective. Yeah. We move into 1946. I really liked the how it, it kind of spans over multiple years. You did sometimes that can feel a little just disjointed. I sometimes don't like when a movie fades to black and then says a year later or five years later or whatever. This is just a year later, but uh, it, 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 it works. I think it was necessary to show just tying in with the post World War II setting of this movie. I think it really works. So it jumps in. We jump into 1946. We meet this girl. She has adopted a child. He and her are are platonic kind of at first but you sense that there's something more we start setting up this romantic kind of romantic again i didn't know how it was going to go at the beginning hilton what was your what was running through your mind as we kind of set up this this found family dynamic well what was really so great about it was how simple they kept it you know they didn't focus on a ton of characters you had the core group of uh shikishima nariko and the little baby akiko and and his neighbor sumiko uh and, and then when he gets the job you have this very clearly defined cast that we talked about before on the boat with the kid, the doc, and the captain. And because they kept it so small and so clearly defined, it was so easy to follow, even as someone, you know, as an American audience who's, you know, reading subtitles and dealing with a few, a few cultural things that may have been a little different from what I'm, I'm used to in my day to day. They, it, it hit on things that are universal. You know, you take uh, the relationship between captain and the kid on the boat, the idea of the kind of older mentor, giving the younger upstart a hard time. These are tropes in in all kinds of stories and they in that universality in the storytelling made it so easy to follow so even though you had that uh time span of 45 to 46 to 47 since it's really just about shikishima and noriko kind of developing their relationship which is platonic but you can tell that she wants a little bit something more it's it was just it was easy to keep us uh, engaged as an audience uh, and and that also made when the threat pops up again in 47, it that much scarier because now we have stakes. Eddie, for a second, I was kind of like, oh, crap. Oh, crap. I don't know where that accent came from. Oh, crap. <laughs> Here we go with our human characters. I don't care about this little kid. But then over the course of the movie, I do. Wouldn't you know what I do? Did you have the same apprehension or were you right there right as they wanted you to be? when they got introduced. I, I've had a feeling that when they first run into each other, you know, I was, oh, okay, this is going to be so important, you know, either he's going to be left with a baby or they're going to, she's going to come back and the, what's her name? The Noriko. Noriko. Yes. Either they're going to be something or it's just going to be him and the baby, right? Akiko. I, I felt for them. I, 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 I felt, uh, basically it's like they were stuck. Like, you know, they both lost their family. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. You, go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, I think the 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 fact that it sets you into like uh, almost like a claustrophobic feel of like, hey, like we're limited on you know the uh, living space, we're limited on uh, resources, and then you have the impending like Godzilla that pops up every now and then throughout the years. Kind of makes it seem like unpredictable, almost like it's unpredictable when the bombs could fall, which they did. You know, so. It's tragic in that sense because, yeah, we're, we're Americans, right? We're from the U.S., but we can still relate to that feeling of like, oh, sh can we cuss here? Oh, absolutely. 
oh shit, something could happen at any moment here. Yeah. Anyways, there's this baby to take care of. Let's focus on that. Nobody joined my USA chant whenever we, we showed the <laughs> aftermath of the bombs. I was like, what the hell? I didn't understand. What? Anyways. Time uh, place. Was... <laughs> Read the room. <laughs> I'm great at reading the room. We all know this. Uh, it was, And then it segueing into the United States role in this movie kind of reminded me of 2014's Godzilla a little bit. When that line, when they said all those nuclear tests in the Pacific were not tests. We were trying to kill it but it made Godzilla bigger Hilton. Yeah. And that's the, the, the other thing too, is especially coming off the Island scene in the beginning of the movie and just how scary he is there. And then when you see him on the boat scene and that head comes up out of the water and it's bigger than the damn boat. I mean, it is it, the way that, you know, we're, we're, we're guys in our thirties or forties or whatever. We've been watching these kind of big special effects movies our entire lives. We've seen bigger and bigger monsters starting with the damn Rancor in 1983. Right. And now this is, here I am. I've been watching these movies my whole life and I'm kind of intimidated by this. It did such a good job of cre of showing scale and really showing what a threat it was. It was, it, it made it that much more fun. If I may, uh, whenever the Godzilla, the, that that same scene when he comes up all the way out of the water and you see his big old chest and his eyes, like it's just like, oh man, like that's the first time, like as you said, that I that I really felt like, holy shit, this thing is huge, especially in IMAX. See in IMAX, guys. Um, yeah, whenever they show the Godzilla, that's whenever I kind of got a lot of the Jaws vibes. But except in Gods in Jaws, they don't want to show you because you know they we all know the story of how it was a shitty thing and they had to cover it up and not showing you the shark a lot. But this one, they can show you Godzilla. In 2014, made the same. I'm just gonna keep shitting on 2014's American Godzilla movie directed by Gareth Edwards. It it, it, it doesn't even show you Godzilla for most of the movie. It, it, the, because in the in the idea is. Well, the CGI would look really silly if he was in broad daylight, right? Huh? And then the Japanese are like, uh-uh, we're going to show you Godzilla broad daylight. You're going to be scared as hell as if you're a home alone at dark. It was great. It was really well done. Is there anything else to say about that chase scene? Uh, which which one? The one the, uh, in the, the, the Yeah, the, the drama trend, and he regenerates his face. That was, only, that was the only thing that was a little bit uh, goofy looking was the regeneration yeah. was so fast. But other than that. I didn't know that he could do that. Did we see this in other movies? I guess I'm not a big enough Godzilla fan. They showed always... it in 2000 uh, for sure, but it was not shown as clearly on screen, which I got to agree with Sam. It was probably some of the weakest CGI in the movie or, or, or what, however the effects were done, but it was cool to see it real. And if that's what it looked like, then that to me also kind of, my suspension of disbelief helped me get wrapped up in the threat there. Because it showed point blank, your dumb bombs aren't going to kill him. Not just yeah. like this. And that was powerful. It really made me go, how the heck are they going to beat him? And then th I think this is also when we see his his heat ray for the first time. If, am I correct? We see his, uh, his and I like I like how it works. I, I had seen it already in Shin Godzilla. Again, I'm going to keep dropping that movie because it has one of the best uh, uh, heat ray scenes of all the movies. But I like kind of like how the dorsal fins are like, you know, going up and up and up and up, and then just the sound design again. Watching it in IMAX, the sound design and it just goes with the visual so well. Just you hear it all click into place, and then boom! Oh my god! There was not it, you could hear a needle drop at certain points in the movie because the audience was that captivated. It was amazing. I love that effect. Yeah, it's that's how you do it. It's like yeah, you could do a scene where he's just shooting off laser beams out of his mouth or whatever. But if you build it up, like just make your moments special, you know. And that's what they really did a good job of making those little moments special. And by setting it up that way, they made the climax of the movie that much more powerful because as an audience, we were familiar with that process. You know, we knew what was going to happen as soon as those scales started moving and it yeah. made those final moments. And I won't get too spoilery here, but it made those final moments that much more powerful and that much more exciting for me as a viewer. Set up In the city. Yeah. Payoff. Bam. <laughs> Set up the payoff. That's how you do it, folks. Let's hope that medicine pays off. <laughs> Uh, is there, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, you guys have both seen it twice. I've seen it once. Uh, but we're talking, of course, about the big things. And I, I the next big thing is when he obliterates the town of, uh, of Ginz Ginza? Ginza? Yeah, I believe Ginza? so, yeah. Ginza. So is there anything in the connective tissue that I'm forgetting to mention be between these uh -huh. big action scenes? Is there anything character-wise that I'm leaving out? Well, there is, um... 
remind me her name. Namiko? Nariko? The, the girl? Nariko. She, I don't know if you want to talk about this, but basically she starts to develop a need to want to get out in society again and like be her own. Uh, she wants to get a job. And yeah. uh, that kind of sets off a little riff there between the two. Seeing her kind of. Yeah, you doing okay there, buddy? I'll be fine. Like, oh. this, this is great. Oh, because yeah, it's rough. Okay. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? You're right. It was, you're right. It, it really sets up for but... when uh, Godzilla attacks Ginza. Yeah. All right, oh. Well, Buddy. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it does. It does set it up really well, right? That's what you're saying? Well, because right as she gets the job yeah. in Ginza is when he attacks. So we've now, we, and, and it's also coming after those kind of the, the years of time have passed. And one thing I didn't mention was we see, so, so he comes home from the war and, and his home is effectively destroyed. And in that time, it's kind of subtle, but you can see the house is being rebuilt. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they're having dinner with um, Captain and Doc in one scene, and, and they're in a, a nice kind of rebuilt dining room. And then mm -hmm. she goes and gets the job, and then Godzilla attacks. And it's like they had just found peace. They had just found stability. They had just rebuilt. And she's now seeking new adventures, a new right. life. and. That's when he comes. That's when the chaos starts. And sure enough, if she doesn't get caught up right in that attack and we get another incredible, powerful scene, which is going to weigh so heavily on Shikishima as we move into the third act of the film. Well, even before that, sorry, Sam, but like um, he had, he kept having those nightmares, right? And they finally had like an understanding. And that's, he's like, all right, I think I'm going to try to live again. And then yep. as soon as he comes to try to come to peace with his PTSD, what happens in the next sequence, you know, it's heartbreaking. Well, yeah, that's what that's I was true. going to touch on. They try and live with it. They try and live with it. And then they complete the movie just tells you there's no way that you can live with Godzilla. He must be destroyed. You can't. It's not like, oh, we'll just coexist. You got to you got to just you got to defeat this monster if you're going to have a have a happy life. And then and this might make the movie better than Shin Godzilla, because the the it, of course, we're talking about the, the Ginza scene where they destroy just obliterate an entire city and several characters but I cared about these characters. Whenever they hit Noriko, they, I was like, oh no, not her. Whereas whenever in Shit Godzilla, everything gets destroyed. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm devastated by the scale, you know, of, 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 of everything getting destroyed. But there's nobody that I really care about. In this, I damn near, I cared about Noriko. And, and, and we all thought she was absolutely, we're, I have the spoiler banner up. I thought she was, there's no freaking way she could survive right. that. Yeah, it's... Well, you didn't see the body. That's yeah. a movie rule right there. If you don't see the body, yeah. And <clears throat> it's it was a moment that for me, I, I, I kind of needed it. After everything Shikishima had gone through to, to, to give him some kind of happy ending, I didn't hate it. And you know what? We also got that scene deep under the sea that maybe this is, story isn't over after all either. So, you know, maybe maybe happiness is still short-lived. I want to see a sequel. I will see a sequel. I love Godzilla that. minus two. Godzilla one, since this is Godzilla minus one, or how would I love that you both went in different directions and both were funny. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, yeah, Godzilla departs, and then, now I'm just reading the Wikipedia article. I shouldn't do that. They are come up with a little bit of a, a zany plan to defeat Godzilla. I was, I, I was kind of like uh, in the movie. I was like, all right, this isn't going to work, and they're going to have to do a last minute change of pace, which I guess they set it up really well. They have their, all the team of scientists are going to do their really silly, you know, drown him and then shoot him up and the air pressure is not going to work. And our main character, whose name I have forgot, Kochi, Koichi, uh, uh, he, yeah. uh, I nailed it. I know I did. Don't need to correct me because I nailed it. Um, it he, he, he's like, this is not going to work. So I'm going to kamikaze. And I'm like, oh, that's his payoff. Oh, he's going to do that. I get it. And I thought I was ready for that. So well, yeah. we're not going to get quite there yet, but what were you, what was running through your guys' head? That's my phrase that I use running through your head, Eddie, as they set up this zany plan that was never going to work. I thought it was, um, I knew something was going to have to, it wasn't going to be enough. I knew it, even after he had said, I, I need to, we need a fighter plane fighter. Plane, I knew something else was going to have to be needed. Uh, something more radical was going to, uh, something from left field. Right. Um, but I was excited. Like I said, I got Jaws vibes from when they're, they're trying to pull the town together to come up with a team to tackle this thing. It kind of reminded me of that. And uh, it was exciting. It was exciting seeing non-military personnel, essentially, most of them ex-veterans. Ex but basically, they're like, look, the government's not going to help us. 
we got to do this shit, all right? And I love that. It, it had an emotional feel to it. And also the fact that uh, some people flat out just like, look, I got a family. I can't do this. Also added to the realism of it. What a great way to to show not only the side that's like some people just they can't, you know, coming down from the war, they're done. They've reached their 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 limit. And it respected that in a and it showed it. And then right as a bunch of the dudes leave, there's some other guys who are like, nope, someone's got to do it. So it's got to be us. It like showed both sides beautifully. It it was so well done. And I appreciated that a lot of them were veterans who had just gone through World War II. And they're like, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not seeing Japan destroyed again. And again, as an American, I was like, fuck yeah. Let's not, I don't want to see Tokyo get destroyed. <laughs> Cause then we wouldn't get all these great animes, you know, later on, all these all this great technology. <laughs> oh, I forgot to lean into that. I hate anime, by the way. So to get me on board with a Japanese Godzilla <laughs> movie was so well, don't make it animated, make it live action. That's how you do it. I hate anime, don't like it. Um <laughs> it's not too late to change your opinion about the movie now that you know that Godzilla minus one does save anime. That's true. Actually, negative review. Would not recommend. Okay. Negative one. The box office. <laughs> Minus one. <laughs> Minus one from us. Minus Wait, one I, out of ten. <laughs> I didn't want to add uh, the uh, the fact that even the leader of the group, uh, Destroyer Commander, whatever his name was, um, the fact that he felt like like there was a knot in his throat, you know, he felt guilty to or like ashamed to even have to ask them to do this, right? You can tell he didn't want to ask people to do this, but someone had to, you know, and I felt like that added to it as well. And it was just, it wasn't just like a, Hey, this is what you're doing and you have to do it because country and glory, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But you got to yeah. talk about this cast. They acted the hell out of those roles. Like every one of them had me in Everyone. game. A hundred percent. It just, you feel it. You feel it in his soul. The, 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 whether it be Kochi's guilt, whether it be Noriko's just longingness to, to move past all this, whether it be the other veterans like, nah, never again. Whether it be the one guy, the doctor guy's amazing hair, the engineer's amazing hair. <laughs> I was taken away by that. It was so good. <laughs> His hair was amazing. on point. It was amazing. And I was like, here I am trying to find a good hairstylist to go to. And he just wakes up and looks like that. I'm sure that's what it is. No, right. the, uh, even the little kid, the little baby girl, like... She was convincing as well. Like, oh, just how do you, that's my thing about child actors. How do they know? How do they just, anyways? She cried on command twice. I'm proud of her. Yeah. Great job. Oh, yeah. I know. Another thing, too, I usually hate children in, in movies, but this, I did not mind the child in this movie. Huge accomplishment. Me saying I did not mind the child in this movie. It was serviceable, whatever. I guess she cried on command twice. I don't remember. But you I did like not. The little, the little deaf girl that talked to Kong in Godzilla versus Kong? You didn't, you didn't love her? I have forgotten all about that. I, I, I completely forgot about that too. I, I remember we Kong talked. You guys don't remember the beauty of talking Kong? <laughs> I remember Mecha Godzilla was the surprise villain at the end of that movie, and that is. Oh, yeah. And I think I, I was reminded that Isaac Gonzalez from Baby Driver was in that movie, and I was like, I completely forgot. I completely forgot. I guess Millie Bobby Brown was there for a while. I didn't know. Yeah. Huh. Stranger yeah. Things kids. They're going to be seventy-eight when season five comes out. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> That's going to be a 1992. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I guess that kind of takes us to the they, – they really set it up well. I'm like, this guy's going to kill himself, and that's going to be the end of his arc. She, She's dead now, uh, Noriko. Uh, they leave the child, a little note, you know, said, like, take care of her or whatever. And uh, cash for the neighbor. And, yeah, to take care – yeah, so she's she's set. And he's like, I'm going to go do my duty. And and again, I was completely, again, what a feat. I was like, yep, you must kill yourself for honor, I guess. That's what you should do, clearly. Undoing all this propaganda in my brain. Um, <laughs> uh, resurfaces, Godzilla resurfaces. So now we have this amazing standoff with the warships. I really like, I, as a Pirates of the Caribbean fan, anytime we can have a nice shot of a bunch of warships lined up, whether they be in 17th century or 21st century, 20th century in this movie, uh, I liked it. I liked it. And it, they set it up and everything kind of goes like you would at first. They, they divert Godzilla's attention and they, they drown. But then, uh-uh, just like I thought, uh-uh, that wasn't going to work. It didn't work. What did we think going into our big climax, Hilton? What did you think? Were you surprised? Did you know it wasn't going to work? All these things. I mean, yeah, it's it was almost like they, they presented us with a plan that they knew sounded a little silly, you know? And then to, to, to talk about pressure killing him or the... There's a Maybe chunk of clue that time. That was disgusting. 
<laughs> oh my god. I don't know how Stephen Colbert does that. He doesn't do it. That's how he doesn't do it. Anyway. That's, that's why you take a day off for that. No. No. Don't know beta. 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 All right. Go ahead. But yeah, the you know, you you kind of knew that this there was a chance this wasn't gonna work. And there's even arguing when they're we're giving the plan. You know, Shikashima almost walks out until the doc is like, no, I think it might actually work. And uh, they said it up, himself. Like, go ahead. You know, I was saying he's convincing himself of that he he still it's theory alone, you know? Like, yeah. But I mean, of course, what else could it be? There's no situation where you can have experience fighting Godzilla. So you, you're you always going in blind. That's true. You know, and uh, I think, um, what's his name? Um, Koichi. Hmm. Koichi, he, he still, he's he got so much guilt with him. And he's just like, like, if this isn't going to do it, then I don't, then I'll just live with his guilt, whatever. I'll just deal with it in my own way. But I think he's just, he wants to know for a fact that if he's going to sacrifice himself, it's for a reason, right? Otherwise, he's got Akiko at home. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. he, he, the sense of duty from being an abandoned kamikaze pilot is, is clearly weighed on him throughout the film. That combined with the loss of everything. I mean, the scene after Noriko is killed where he collapses on the ground while Godzilla is still standing there, for God's sakes, and, and is just wailing at the heavens in despair uh you know koichi shikishima that that you it's you feel this man's pain so when he makes the choice to say i'm gonna be the one he has tachibana outfit the plane with bombs so that he can blow up godzilla and you know you can't argue with him he he's earned this honorable death if that's the path he's choosing and they also set that I, I liked it. He goes to the guy who, does, who he knows that he wouldn't uh, talk to him unless he like goaded him into talking to him. So he gets beat up and then he's like, oh, he's like smiling as he got beat up. He's like, you came. And he's like, well, yeah, yeah. it was good. I really like that. Just the little details that I've forgotten about until this discussion. It's a very well done movie. And another little detail that I almost forgot about. Thank God for Wikipedia. All the tugboats come through. What a heartwarming scene. I love that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Eddie, that was great. What do you have to say about the tugboats and just the nature of all these civilians coming in to help in the 11th hour? Well, I mean, because everyone's been affected. It's not just uh, the veterans. It's not just the ex-Navy guys. And, you know, the whole the city, the whole island of Tokyo, like the, or I'm sorry, the, of Japan, like the whole mainland, everyone's, uh, well, I, I guess it's only two main cities, but still, like, everyone needs to, they're, they're coming together as if it was, it, like, if it's war again. And uh, it's not like they want to, but they need to, essentially. They need to get rid of that, uh, the whatever sadness, whatever guilt they might feel, survivor's guilt. You know, maybe it's not just Koichi and, and uh, the mechanic. It's, it's a bunch of them that might feel that. And uh, I think that was great that they came together at the end and... Uh, just, and it makes a great moment for the kid too. You know, he he's been shut out from going the on the kid. mission. Uh, Doc and the captain won't let him come with, and it, it's his kind of moment. To he found a way while still on land to to use his own resources and be helpful. And and that scene where he's like, you know, uh, the useless are here to help. And then you start hearing each of the tugboat captains chiming in, saying that they're there. And it, it was it was the. Um, it's the scene in, in Rise of Skywalker where Lando shows up with 7,000 ships, but done well and done the right way, you know? You saved yourself. See, I thought of that. I thought of that. And then I also thought of Dunkirk, you know? Because yeah. you, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I thought of both. That's, or that's independence. The movie, Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot about Dunkirk. I did see it. I, I forgot about it, though. I think uh, uh, Harry Styles was in that movie, and that's the reason he's an actor now. So thanks, Christopher <laughs> Nolan. Jeez. What, what's he ever done, right? Christopher Nolan? Christopher Nolan. Oh, great double feature. Great double feature. Oppenheimer, Godzilla minus one. Bam. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. They're in the same universe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Delayed laugh is still laughter. Okay. Um, uh, Godzilla's pissed at this point. He hasn't been killed, but he's pissed. But Koichi knows. He regenerates, but not enough to save him. So then we can, I'm trying to think, I'm just, I'm just jumping right into it. He just kamikazes himself. Bam. Oh my God. Explosions. It's blown up. Right. He killed himself. I was like, wow. But then, uh, uh the smoke clears. We see Koichi still alive. Thank God too. Because you know how pissed he would probably be from heaven. If he was like, he didn't even die. He's still regenerated. And I killed myself. <laughs> what the hell? So I, I liked that. Uh, 
Eddie, did you like yeah, the? Yeah. Did you, do you wish he had killed himself, or are you glad that he didn't? No, no, I'm glad because I, remember that scene where he's like, he's going over the 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 adjustments to the plane that they made, and he's like, huh, funny, I almost want to live this time. Yeah, that's when I was like, oh gosh, so he's, he's he can't die, he can't die, and yeah, you know, he did the Dark Knight Rises thing where you know he survives at the end, so I, I loved it. Also better, also done better than Dark Knight. Dark Knight Rises is a good movie in a lot of ways. It still doesn't fucking make sense. That, that <laughs> ways on the screen, though. Sorry, what was yeah, that? that? Dark Knight Rises. It was good, like like if you needed to like have like a wobbly table or something, and you needed to put a DVD under it to make the tables. That would be good for Dark Knight it's Rises. But to, it's a good to watch it. I wouldn't wouldn't say. Yeah, good coaster. <laughs> I mean, uh, the last yeah, oh, a drink. Yeah, you got it like a Here drink. We go. Let's it's, do it. Condensation, perfect. Good use of that DVD for sure. Wow. I have the uh, really with, the, with the scene on the plane, you know, right before uh, Tachibana shows uh, Koichi what he's done to the plane, you've got uh, uh, the captain talking to the crowd of people, and he's talking about all the the kind of mistakes of the Japanese government, and they talk about the uh, food shortages and medicine shortages during the war, and he talks about kamikaze pilots and and that very nature of you know sacrificing people for the war effort. And then that next scene, you've got Tachibana going over everything, and they have that, oh, and one more thing, right as the camera's kind of panning away. And then you see that exchange between the two of them after we find out that Koichi survived the bomb. And it's, especially for Tachibana, who was someone who in the opening scene, after Koichi fails to shoot Godzilla, and Tachibana is uh, holding him to task for that. He's the one that gives him all the photos of the dead men from Odo Island. He's the one that keeps telling him you're to blame for their deaths. And he's the one who is beating Koichi's ass after Koichi sends those letters saying that it was Tachibana's fault. And that's how he lures him uh, to, to, uh, to, to come fix the plane. And so Tachibana's whole story has been, you didn't come, you didn't kill yourself when we needed you to. And he turns out to be the one that saves his life. It's and he yeah, he becomes invested in in our guy living, just like we are. And he is. It's a great arc. Thank you, Hilton. Yeah. I forgot about that. They're um, connected, those two, you know, from tra you know, from the beginning to the end. And that's why he reaches out and says, no, it has to be him. He has to be the mechanic that works on this plan because I know the war is not over for him. Like, it's not over for me. And I thought that was beautiful, you know? Yeah. And it is the Dark Knight Rises thing, too, where, yeah, like, I remember, I'm, I remember, I'm remembering, it's all coming back okay. to me now. The Dark Knight Rises, Morgan Freeman is like, oh, just tell okay, me if right. there was a way I could have ejected or I could have saved him. And he says, oh, there already was autopilot. It says right here, in exposition dump. It says right here that Bruce Wayne saved himself. Shut up. You know what? This whole time, I've been thinking Godzilla Minus One was really just Independence Day remade because you've got the, the sacrificing himself at the end. Maybe it really is Dark Knight Rises. Maybe, maybe that's what it was this whole time. Everything's Nolan is a hack. Yeah, I, I, liked the, I liked that he didn't kill himself. I thought it was really good. And, and I believed it, too. He flies right into the mouth. Oh, it was great. He look, flies right in the mouth. Bam! Explosion. It was good. It was good. Um, and then it leads me into the next thing that I didn't like, Noriko surviving. Huh? She should be dead. She's dead. I will argue real quick. I want to say that... I saw most of everything for the most part playing out the way it did, like after the, uh, for the, the final act, except for that. That was like, okay, I needed to be surprised in some way. And I'm glad that was it. You know, it just, I, I broke down. I'm not going to lie. I, it got me yeah. emotionally. Same. Yeah. I and he's running up the stairs. I'm like, she's alive. She's alive. No way. No way. After all that. Yep. I did not. I got angry. I got angry. I threw <laughs> my popcorn at the screen. I threw it at the screen. I said, she should be dead. Did not make sense. Should be. Should be. I mean, I will. I meant like, realistically speaking, yeah, probably she should have died. She should be no, dead. Thematically, no, I, I'm objectively correct. She should be dead. Will not fight me on this, Hilton. Uh, did you? Is there any way she could have survived? I just said, do not fight me on this. I mean, she did. Damn it! That was good. That was a good response. Were you satisfied with that? Uh, yeah, like I it's, like I said earlier, it's Holly, that that was the the Hollywood magic of the movie, and it's not a Hollywood film, obviously, but that same that was movie making magic. And after everything, I was totally fine with it. You know, this we had on Odo Island, we had scenes where Godzilla's foot is clearly stomping on three or four people, so viscerally, so visually, so in your face. This movie was such an emotional ride from start to end. I was happy for a little bit of positive cheery it's going to be okay payoff and then we saw what was happening at the bottom of the ocean and we got nothing that we can trust but whatever 
<laughs> I, 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 two things. I thought that we were going to get, and I'm not going to push back too much. It's all, we're having fun here. But I thought that that our emotional payoff was that Koichi survives. I thought, again, I, well, I bought in the fact yeah. he was going to die. I was yeah. like, okay, there's our emotional payoff. He's he's a little bit worse for wear. He's suffered losses, some big losses, but he's going to be okay. And the daughter, will, the adoptive daughter, will have a father. And that's our. We're going to be okay. But then they just give him everything he wants. He should have won the lottery too. I was like, what the hell? That was in the <laughs> the bonus scene. Did you not stay uh, through the credits? I did not. I did not. Yeah, he wins. Credits. He wins the lottery, and then uh, Mothra asks if he wants to join the Godzilla Avengers. Uh, and then, of course, the last thing is our cliffhanger, and and I was I was kind of neutral on this. I was like, wow, okay, I guess this is a one because I, I guess the Toho movie is kind of uh, I guess except for some of the first ones, but these are kind of reboot. Like this is not connected to Shin Godzilla, so I assumed no. that like like the like that the next one will not be connected to this. So I was like, yeah, you can you can kill Godzilla, you know, if you want to, and, and they didn't. So it's kind of I, I I was fine, but I I read the interview with the director later, and he says I want there to be you can't kill Japanese Japanese is like the Japanese people's biggest icon. So we left that little cliffhanger there. Uh, it probably won't go anywhere is the sense that I get, but it's just a little fun, little tidbit at the end. I like that. I, I, I guess I'm more on the side of, I like it with understanding the director's ideas in mind. But at first I totally bought that, that Godzilla was dead. Are we, would we have changed the ending in that respect at all, Eddie? I don't think I would have because we still need to see Godzilla be a good guy, you know, at some point. No, oh, like, fuck, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like you said, he's, you can't kill him off like that. Not, not with, not with those weapons. I mean, no, it's just not possible. Um, but, but also the fact that I don't know if we've mentioned this yet, but the fact that you see like the little blackness, whatever was on, uh, what's her name again? The girl. There go. There yeah. Go. There, I don't know if you saw that, but basically like there was like some blackness that was, warming on her neck and i'm assuming that's just from the radiation sick you yeah. know so it's not a completely happy ending it was very quick very you're subtle right. you're right yeah she does have radiation poison. i read online too in the wikipedia article that i have right here on my, on my screen that she she does have radiation poisoning um so, so she's got a long road ahead. Uh, love is a long long road i saw the grand theft auto trailer uh oh, long okay. long road ahead of her and i will say you know she didn't look happy at the end you know <laughs> She looked, I mean, obviously she's still bandaged up and, and, and in a hospital or whatever, but there was no big smile. There was no glad to see you. It was just, is your war finally over, you know, and, and him collapsing at her side. You know? That was, and that's almost worth it for the, that line, for somebody to deliver that line to him. And that was, that got me, that did get me. I was like, damn, he's had this internal struggle with him from not killing himself the entire movie and then the way he survived he, the way he solves that internal conflict is not by killing himself but finding by finding something to live for oh my god what a fantastic movie guys oh my god yeah it's good stuff i think that's all i have to say about this guys hilton thank you so much for joining me you want to let people know where they can find the opinions like a-holes podcast or the people person's paper podcast Oh, sure. You can find them on any of your favorite podcast apps. Just search opinions like A-Holes or People Person's Paper Podcast. Or you can find everything we do on our website, olaministries.com, where you can also find the rest of our podcast lineup, including my show, OK Geek, my mother's show, Stories with Mom, Podcasting to Perfection, where they're talking about the Tremors movies and soon to be talking about Starship Troopers, and Binge with Terrell Norton, which is our most recent podcast, where he's going through all sorts of different shows with special guests. And if you want to be a guest on Opinions Like A-Holes, drop me a line on social media. Eddie. You want to, yeah. is there a place where people could find you online? Or if somebody sees you and is like, my goodness, yeah. he looks like he'd be a great asset to my film, where can they find your work? <laughs> so uh, I, have a, I have a website, actually. It's called, uh, what is my website? Oh, www.esalcedo.com. Uh, is that my website? Hold on one second. Oh, uh, esalcedo really? on Instagram as well. So it's esalcedo.com and, yeah. and the Instagram handle is? esau 17 Esau 17. I got to say, you're not selling the pictures as much as Hilton did. Hilton had a whole speech memorized. I know. Like, yeah, this guy over here. <laughs> no, you know, people You know, people can talk to me if they want to know about me. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Just drop him a, a link, a snail mail. Send him a, a, his address is in the description of this video. <laughs> My physical address. My phone number is. You guys got that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah we'll, we'll fix it in post. All right, guys. That's the Film Fan Club show for this week. Thank you to Hilton. Thank you to Eddie. We'll see you guys. Wait, I got to do my outros. All right, if you want to catch these discussions live, follow us on twitch.tv slash the film fan club. We got a podcast feed, anchor.fm slash the film fan club. You can find all of it on Apple, Spotify, of course, YouTube right here. Subscribe, youtube.com slash the film fan club. And uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next stream.